Live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Well, we've got a lot to talk about, folks, and that starts with the Attorney General of the United States who goes to Orlando during a vigil and makes the following statement saying that we defeat this evil with our humanity, which transcends our differences, and our most effective response to terror is compassion, it's unity, and it's love. I am, I'm not kidding you. This is what the Attorney General of the United States has said. Let me play it for you. Our most effective response to terror and to hatred is compassion, it's unity, and it's love. This is absurd. Positively absurd. Coming from our chief law enforcement officer, the Attorney General of the United States, who's responsible for issues involving terrorism. And Jordan, and I'll go to Jordan Than quickly here, the nature of this statement that it's love is what you need, quoting the 1968 you know, Beatles song, is, is absurd. But I mean, well, you know, the, the, the Beatles song's a song. It's, not a, it's yeah. not a method upon which you eradicate terrorism. Well, it's, the, it's like a war protest. And, and in fact, what we need is a war. I mean, you know, that's just, it's just living in this other reality, rose-colored glasses to say the least. But honestly, what I see it is, is the throwback. We talk about that this is an administration that was educated at these very yep. high levels in a radical time period. And now they're taking that radical ideology that they learned in college in their Ivy League schools in the 60s and, and 70s and applying it to our foreign policy or our national defense or our security when it comes to the Department of Justice, our law enforcement and that love will win out the day. And we know that's just not the case when you're dealing with yep. terrorists. They are not even like a normal army that you can ultimately reconcile with. Right. They are a force that is willing to die for what they believe in. They want to bring about that ultimate death for all of them if they cannot be victorious on the battlefield. We're taking your calls on this absurd statement, your position. We want to know what you think about this reaction from the Attorney General of the United States. All you need is love. 1-800-684-3110. And then the new head of African Command for U.S. Forces. He's got some strong words, and he's the Obama nominee for this. By the way, new petition up right now, which is an important one. It is our five-step plan, which we're going to talk to with them. We come back from the break. We want to get that implemented in Congress to feed ISIS and Islamic jihadists. We'll be back with more in a moment. The Islamic State, ISIS, wants to destroy America and eradicate Christianity. Jihadists pledging allegiance to ISIS and radical Islam have attacked America, slaughtering dozens of Americans in multiple terrorist attacks. President Obama refuses to acknowledge the enemy. His administration has failed to protect us. ISIS is at war with us. We must wage war against ISIS. At the ACLJ, we've developed a critical five-point strategy to defeat and destroy this jihadist enemy. We have five key steps to defeat ISIS. One, name the enemy, Islamic jihadists. Two, fix our broken intelligence. Three, ramp up undercover stings to smoke out jihadists at home. Four, declare war on ISIS. And five, unleash full U.S. military might to utterly destroy ISIS. Stand with us, add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org. The philosophy of the attorney general on dealing with terrorism is, to quote the Beatles, all you need is love, except that's not a terrorism philosophy. That was a song in the 1960s. 
So this this nature of this is is reached the level of absurdity. Did, and first of all, nobody in America is buying this. No one is buying that this is you can love them into stop killing us because that's what we're talking about here. That is not the way this works. We're going to go right to our phones. Uh, before we go to the phones, though, let me go to Than Bennett. There is also a story that is out right now. U.S. Africa commander nominee is a major lieutenant general. He was asked, is there a grand strategy in combating ISIS? He says there's not. He said, is ISIS a threat in Libya? He was asked a question by Lindsey Graham. He said, yes. Are we taking action in Libya? He says, no. I want to play for you this interchange between Senator Graham and, uh, or you want to start with McCain? Let's start with John McCain first. Folks, I'm putting this in the context of this is because it ties into the Orlando situation. It's the lack of a strategy here. Let's play the Senator McCain language. Do we have a strategy for, for, for Libya, or are we just acting in an ad hoc fashion, which has is been the case as we've watched ISIS uh, establish, metastasize, and grow in Libya? Well, as I indicated, the two, pre, the two strategic objectives that we do have for Libya is to assist the I know the objectives. Do we have a strategy? To continue to support that right at this point in time. I am not, I am not aware of any overall grand strategy at this point. Pretty shocking. No overall grand strategy. Now, this is going on in Washington right now, Than. Reaction on the Hill. Jay, this is the nominee to lead the president's plan to eliminate ISIS in where? Africa. Where is Libya? Africa. And he testifies to the Senate that the president doesn't have any plan or any strategy that he is aware of to, to accomplish that. So let me ask this question. If the Senate confirms this individual to lead the president's strategy to eradicate ISIS in Africa, how is he going to do, go about that if he does not know what the strategy is? Jay, last week we heard from Director Comey, right. uh, Director Brennan, and those 51 State Department employees. Even the people that the president is nominating this week to lead this strategy don't know what the strategy is. And Jordan, this points to the fundamental failure. It's it's Loretta Lynch in Orlando saying we need love and compassion to beat the terrorists. It's the the nominee for AFCOM, which is the African command of the U.S. military uh, in Africa, acknowledging that there is no overall strategy. This is the president's nominee. This is very, very troubling. Yeah, it's it's this kind of like love your enemy approach and, and missing the point of that, that, that you, you still don't stop fighting your enemy and you still don't have to defeat your enemy. Uh, and, that, and that means, of course, as Christians, you know, we pray that this situation is resolved, but we also deal with reality. And, and as many of us were blessed to be born in the United States of America, a country that has the ability to do something about this when we either face these tax uh, attacks at home yep. or abroad when uh, there is war waging and it is in impacting our interests it's getting to the level of genocide we can do something about it we're, we are born into a country where we have direct uh, representation from our leaders and, and the congress we elect our president of the united states and we can demand more and and fortunately and I, I say this honestly fortunately we've got a presidential election coming up where we can yep. see a significant change hopefully very soon all right we've got an opposing call coming in from angel in brooklyn new york on line two we're going to go right to it angel you're on the air how are you doing, guys? Um, I'm sorry, but I oppose with the idea. I agree with the attorney general. Well, what idea um, with the attorney general do you agree with? What is the idea you agree with? Well, with, with, with going with peace instead of war, an eye for an eye. You know, you, you, there's something has to be done, but we can't keep sending the young children over there and people keep dying. Well, do, but do you, do you think you don't really agree with her that you win this war with radical jihadists by love, do you? We, even even if we get rid of them before I well, hold, hold it hold it you, you know angel I'm you know I just ask my question and then I'll let you talk do you really believe that we can defeat them by by love because you also said an eye for an eye by the way that's right out of the scriptures an eye for an eye was is part of it but uh, you know love's in the scriptures too and I understand the proclamation of the gospel I, I completely agree with all that into the into the entire world but do you think we beat radical jihadists by loving them rather than fighting them I don't think so. I know so for a fact. You know so. And God, tell me the fact that you know, because I don't understand that fact. Educate me. I'm I'm all ears. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's I'm it, it's, a, it's a special it's a special spiritual thing that you got. Well, it's a special spiritual that thing know. that you have and nobody else does because you know you, you think that you're gonna tell. Explain to me the special spiritual thing because I don't really understand it. 
open your heart and open your mind. So, no, 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 hold it. I believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of mankind, but I don't think that means we don't defend ourselves and attack an enemy that is attacking us. And you're saying it's a special spiritual thing that if you love them, they'll stop doing this. Um, yes. Okay. Yes, I think that- the conversation is now over. Thank you for listening. <laughs> you, I will put you with Loretta Lynch in the land, Jordan, of the absurd. Yeah, and, and the whole eye for an eye uh, analogy is incorrect here. We're talking about we need to totally defeat a group. We're not talking about t- a tit-for-tat situation. Right. We're talking about going in and destroying ISIS, which needs to be done to protect our country, to protect our Christian brothers and sisters around the world uh, who are facing their threats, and to restore some stability to what has always been a difficult region in the world, but is right now raging in war, and it's becoming increasingly international, which becomes a threat to even more countries, more people uh, who want to be able to go about their daily life. The fact is that in these situations, you could say love your enemy, but you still have to defeat your enemy. It is not talking about an eye for an eye. This is not a justice situation. Uh, in, in a in a personal matter right. we're talking about and in a criminal matter either this is about fully defeating and destroying an enemy and that is still in line with our biblical values yep. with our american values it sometimes has to be done we don't like it we don't want to have to do it but sometimes people bring the war to us and we have to respond you know it's interesting there's a comment by rebecca on facebook i'm, I'm monitoring right now it says as the scriptures say, there is a time for war and a time for peace, but there's also that time for war. And um, I, I think this was this whole idea of what they're doing is ridiculous. Uh, Darlene on Facebook says there's no love in these people. All they understand is e- the evil that's a part of them. They don't want love. They d- and that's, by the way, you, that's what you're dealing with. I mean, if, if you're the Messiah, you could change it. We're not. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a phone call. Roger's calling from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Hi, Roger. Hi, I just have a statement to make. Sure. Uh, our goody two-shoe president is not living in the real world, and this isn't the time for love. Well, you know, the, the fact of the matter is the president is just nominated for the AFCOM commander, Thane. Let's go back over this. Someone that is acknowledging. Do we have the Lindsey Graham comments? Let me play. This is Senator Graham talking to him. We fly in Libya. The answer is yes, if there is a target that is an imminent threat to the United States. Okay. Is uh, ISIL an imminent threat to the United States? Yes. Is ISIL in Libya? Yes. How many sorties have we flown in Libya? To my knowledge, none at this time. That makes no sense, then, does it? It does not. This is the nominee for the president for AFCOM. Fan? And he doesn't know what the president's strategy is. And he doesn't know what the pres- president's he strategy is, Jay, after acknowledging... Well, right, but after acknowledging that that the threat in Libya is indeed imminent, listen, uh, you know, to go back to the last caller's point, I am all about the goal of spreading the love of Christ around the world, but it is the sacred duty of the American commander in chief to defend its citizens, yep. and his nominee to to lead this effort in, in Africa has just testified that there is an imminent threat to the citizens, and yet this president's strategy, Jay, and these are the the direct words from the White House is to squeeze ISIS, to squeeze them, not to crush them, but to squeeze them. It's time for a professional commander-in-chief, and we don't have one at this point. we we got five more months of this. Here's what he said. This lieutenant general said, I'm not aware of any overall strategy at this point. I mean, a, a, a pretty shocking statement. I'm going to grab another call here before the break. Sue, very quickly, you're on the air, line three. Hey, Sue. Hi. Yes, can you hear me? We can. You're great. You're on the air. I just wanted to make a comment. Sure. I have uh, seen this situation Escalate, and this is the time to strike. We have an army that is moving by land vehicle with rubber tires, and I think that this is the time when they are going to be vulnerable, and we yep. need to strike. It is it is sad, but it has to be done. And, and nobody Christian- wants war. I mean, I think that's a, that the point of what we're saying here is nobody want. This is not a situation when Jordan, where we want war. It's just the rea- they've declared war on us, and they're executing that war in the United States, San Bernardino. Fort Hood, Orlando, yeah, yeah, Boston. Right. We can't ignore it. No, we can't ignore it. It's been brought to our doorstep for a number of years now, and the threat is is increasing. And it don't just take my word for it. Take the CIA director's word for it. John Brennan last week in his testimony, the threat posed by specifically ISIS, not just generically radical Islam, but this group, the Islamic State, is growing internationally. Not just the, we're not just talking about the battlefield here and there with the reports we get out of the Pentagon. We're talking about their international terror efforts. They are expanding under the president's strategy. Don't forget, sign our petition now, which includes our five-point plan, which is declare war on ISIS. 
Go to ACLJ.org for that. Over 20,000 people have already gone there. ACLJ.org. Also, make sure you're responding to our email that is out today. We've got an important one about jihad and the eradication of Christianity in the Middle East that is taking place. We are fighting it at the UN and other places. We need your help. ACLJ.org to sign on to these petitions. We'll be back with more in a moment. The Islamic State, ISIS, wants to destroy America and eradicate Christianity. Jihadists pledging allegiance to ISIS and radical Islam have attacked America, slaughtering dozens of Americans in multiple terrorist attacks. President Obama refuses to acknowledge the enemy. His administration has failed to protect us. ISIS is at war with us. We must wage war against ISIS. At the ACLJ, we've developed a critical five-point strategy to defeat and destroy this jihadist enemy. We have five key steps to defeat ISIS. One, name the enemy, Islamic jihadists. Two, fix our broken intelligence. Three, ramp up undercover stings to smoke out jihadists at home. Four, declare war on ISIS. And five, unleash full U.S. military might to utterly destroy ISIS. Stand with us, add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org. So let me play the sound from the lieutenant general who's being nominated for uh, African Command, where he says there's no strategy. I want to play that for you right now. Do we have a strategy for, for, for Libya, or are we just acting in an ad hoc fashion, which has is been the case as we've watched ISIS uh, establish, metastasize, and grow in Libya? Well, as I indicated, the two, pre- the two strategic objectives that we do have for Libya is to assist the stand- I know the objectives. Do we have a strategy? To continue to support that right at this point in time. I am, not, I am not aware of any overall grand strategy at this point. Okay, so there's the guy that's been nominated to run it in, for Libya uh, or Africa to get rid of ISIS. No grand strategy at all. Josh Earnest, president spokesperson, different view. Listen to number two. What the president of the United States has done has put forward a comprehensive strategy to squeeze the Islamic State uh, in Iraq and in Syria to inhibit their ability to recruit and radicalize people around the globe. Maybe he should share that with the nominee for the African command because he certainly hasn't gotten that same message. And this is problematic. It's nothing against the general, by the way. I think he's being honest, as is John Brennan, as is Jim Comey. But you understand that the nominee that the president's putting forward has a completely different view of this than the president of the United States and his administration. And Jordan, that points to a fundamental problem within this last five months of this administration. Yeah, it's that there's no clear strategy to defeat ISIS wherever they are. So, it depend, you know, get outside of Syria and Iraq where we have an yep. air campaign. And we know uh, from the testimony last week that one place that ISIS is expanding significantly is in North Africa, Libya specifically. And you have the new AFRICOM uh, a commander put forward by President Obama and cannot there, there's nothing going on. And there's literally nothing going on, which means not only is there not a strategy, there's not even an attempt to uh, push back against ISIS. Yeah. And, and we know that these terror groups, especially when they start expanding outside of their regions where they've been engaged in their direct conflict like ISIS has in Syria right. and Iraq, when they start looking for places to operate from. Remember, Damascus used to be a main operation hub until this war for a group like Hezbollah. It was a better right. place for them to be. It was uh, it was tougher for uh, Israelis to get to them, obviously, because the conflict right. that could ensue there. They had the Iranian, more direct Iranian and Assad protection. Right. So they would operate out of these cities like Damascus. Well, now Libya, s- typical situation, you know, it's, it's a, been kind of a muddled mess post Gaddafi. And so that's, it's a safer place to be if you are trying yep. to plan the international attacks. The guys who are in the ISIS fighters in Syria and Iraq are dealing daily with out on battlefield, you know, issues and air campaigns. But in Libya, as we now know, they're not dealing with anything like that. They're just, they just have to deal with which they're very good at, uh, just the internal problems going on in Libya. And basically, hey, they're the ones that have the guns, so that they're pretty safe there right now e wall on periscope says we couldn't have won world war ii if we had simply hugged the nazis or the empire of japan and i think there's a lot of truth to that uh we also have an a, a situation though fan right now where the nominees being honest the administration is a different position but this is the administration's nominee and this points to a fundamental governance problem 
Well, I like the way the general put it. He said that there was an object- objective but no strategy to carry it out. And where, we ha- where have we seen that before, Jay? The objective to contain ISIS. But, oh, by the way, then they spread to Paris. Then they spread to San Bernardino. Then they spread to Orlando. The containment strategy yeah. has failed. So what does this administration do? They don't change the objective or the strategy, Jay. They just change the word. Now we're not trying to contain ISIS. We're trying to squeeze them. Yeah. And we're trying to well, love, love them. them out of existence. Jay, it, it's, it's just not going to work. Well, we could love them. If we love them, maybe they'll love us back, sure. and that's the theory. Which Daryl from Greenville, South Carolina, tends to agree with the Attorney General, I guess, and disagrees with me. That's a free country. Daryl, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's just a, a narrow approach to say that we're going to love them with open arms, but love also requires resiliency, commitment, and the resolve to carry out those goals. And, you know, you may not agree with the president, but I think, you know, applying um, – uh, uh, dip, uh, sanctions, continuing to apply those sanctions against those states that support ISIS, and along with uh, uh, introducing the forces in the in the area operations yeah. that where they're affected. That so that's what he's doing now. Well, you I mean, you, 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 let, let me, let, I'm not going to give you a free pass, and Daryl, I appreciate you calling. I'm not giving you a free pass on the sanctions issue because the president just lifted the sanctions on the largest state sponsor of terror in the world, and that is the Islamic Republic of Iran. So. T- I, I, that I agree, but that was in accord with the negotiations for uh, just a recent uh, arms deal. Uh, so, yeah, well, that recent arms deal, I mean, you've got the Iranians, the Russians, and the Syrians in cahoots. This does not bode well for the, the region. It does not bode well for Israel, and it certainly doesn't bode well for the United States. So, I mean, I just don't understand. I think it's where you and I have a disagreement. It's a free country. We can disagree. Is This policy is absurd. And the attorney general of the United States going down to Orlando and saying, in the light of that terror attack, we could win this by humility and law. I'm playing it again. I want everybody here. I like laying out that evidence. This is her own words. Tell me if you agree, Daryl, once you hear them. Our most effective response to terror and to hatred is compassion, it's unity, and it's love. Our most effective response to terror is compassion, unity, and love. Daryl, do you believe that? I believe that we uphold the ideals. And no, that we I under, no, no, that's not the question. Do you believe our most effective combating of terrorism is compassion, unity, and love? Do you believe that is a correct statement? No, not 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 okay. in that context. No, I don't. And that's where I but, think she made. And Daryl, that's where I think was a. It, I understand the the heartfelt nature of what she's trying to say, but those statements only encourage our enemies because it shows fundamental weakness. And Jordan, that's one thing we should not be projecting right now, which unfortunately we are. Yeah, and 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 you know when we talk about these past conflicts that the U.S. has been engaged in on a, lo- a large scale. Obviously, ultimately, you do want to reconcile. So that's where that love and compassion, I think, is unique even to our country and because of our Judeo-Christian values. That's why we have great relationships with Germany and Japan. It took time, but we have those now. Uh, that's an after the fact. That's after you defeat the, the, the threat. And on this threat, which is different than even those, these are not enlisted soldiers in the sense that they're fighting for their country. These are people who are actively joining up, traveling from around the world to engage in this battle, and they do not mind uh, being killed. Their ultimate goal is is you know suicide attacks, etc. So our our number one way to defeat this, the best way to defeat this, is to kill the enemy. I you mean, know, it's it's just a, a f- unfortunate reality that we are going to have to kill these individuals to defeat them. Love is not going to carry out the victory. Love is how you reconcile once this conflict is over with those individuals who can go back into a normal society, which is not easy in the Middle East, but it's certainly something we want to do ultimately. Our friend Andrew White, it's certainly who ministers in this region and is full of love and compassion, but knows that's not the way you're going to defeat this enemy. Take a listen. When you look at the threat of ISIS, you, when we first, when ISIS first raised its head, you, I had you in an interview in, in Jerusalem. You said this was a group that has, you cannot, and you're a guy that deals with reconciliation and negotiation, that this was not a group you could negotiate with. You can't at all. I am a great believer in meeting with enemies. I meet with bad people all the time. I call them the bad guys. Yep. And I invited the bad guys from ISIS to come and have lunch with me. And they said, if we come to you, we'll kill you. So they didn't come. You can't engage. These people are so evil 
These terrorists are so extreme that it's impossible to engage with. You know, I was um, last year. We were at uh, Oxford as we do. We have our Oxford Center for the Study of Law and Public Policy. Um, and we had a program that we were involved in at Exeter College and at Harris Manchester. And it was interesting because the the tutor, the, the professor that was the head of this particular program where I was giving papers and others were as well, is a guy that's a very much a negotiator and, and, and politically left of center. But he said uh, that when it comes to ISIS, he's the one who told me there's one way to deal with them, crush them. Do you share that sentiment that they have to be eliminated as a threat? Sadly, yes. In the nice world, working with peace, reconciliation, and forgiveness, I still say to my people, we must pray for them. Mm. We must pray that they change. But I have seen no change. And unless they are removed, unless they are overpowered, They will defeat us totally. Folks, that's going to do it for the broadcast this week. Let me encourage you to do something. We've laid out a five-point plan on how to deal with ISIS, how to deal with terrorism. This is something we've given a lot of thought to. We've analyzed it. Some of it's based on our work that we've done over Oxford the last few years. Also, Professor Harry Hutchison did an excellent job of putting a piece together that's up at ACLJ.org. We need you to stand with us. We've got a petition up right now to defeat ISIS by declaring war against radical jihadists. Go to aclj.org or call us at 1-877-989-2255. That's aclj.org. That's the easiest way. aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255. We'll see you next week. The Islamic State, ISIS, wants to destroy America and eradicate Christianity. Jihadists pledging allegiance to ISIS and radical Islam have attacked America, slaughtering dozens of Americans in multiple terrorist attacks. President Obama refuses to acknowledge the enemy. His administration has failed to protect us. ISIS is at war with us. We must wage war against ISIS. At the ACLJ, we've developed a critical five-point strategy to defeat and destroy this jihadist enemy. We have five key steps to defeat ISIS. One, name the enemy, Islamic jihadists. Two, fix our broken intelligence. Three, ramp up undercover stings to smoke out jihadists at home. Four, declare war on ISIS. And five, unleash full U.S. military might to utterly destroy ISIS. Stand with us, add your name to our new petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org.